Hello everybody! Welcome to today's Reading Through the Bible in 365. Today we are going to be focusing on Genesis chapter 49 and chapter 50, which will finish off Genesis, and then Matthew chapter 13 verses 31 to 58. So let's get started in Genesis with chapter 49. <clears throat> Then Jacob called together all his sons and said, Gather around me, and I will tell you what will happen to each of you in the days to come. Listen, come and listen, you sons of Jacob. Listen to Israel, your father. Reuben, you are my firstborn, my strength, the child of my vigorous youth. You are first in rank and first in power, but you are are as unruly as a flood, and you will be first no longer. For you went to bed with my wife. You defiled my marriage couch. Simeon and Levi are two of a kind. Their weapons are instruments of violence. May I never join in their meetings. May I never be a party to their plans. For in their anger they murdered men, and they crippled oxen just for sport. A curse on their anger, for it is fierce. A curse on their wrath, for it is cruel. I will scatter them among the descendants of Jacob. I will disperse them throughout Israel. Judah, your brothers will praise you. You will grasp your enemies by the neck. All your relatives will bow before you. Judah, my son, is a young lion that has finished eating its prey. Like a lion, he crouches and lies down, like a lioness who dares to rouse him. The scepter will not depart from Judah, nor the ruler's staff <coughs> from his descendants, until the coming of the one to whom it belongs, the one whom all nations will honor. He ties his foal to a grapevine, the colt of his donkey to a choice vine. He washes his clothes in wine, his robes in the blood of grapes. His, eye, <clears throat> his eyes are darker than wine, and his teeth are whiter than milk. Zebulun will settle by the seashore and will be a harbor for ships. His borders will extend to Sidon. Issachar is a sturdy donkey, resting between two saddle packs. When he sees how good the countryside is and how pleasant the land, he will bend his shoulder to the load and submit himself to hard labor. Dan will govern his people like any other tribe in Israel. Dan will be a snake beside the road, a poisonous viper along the path that bites the horse's hooves so its rider is thrown off. I trust in you for salvation, O Lord. Gad will be attacked by marauding bands, but he will attack them when they retreat. Asher will dine on the rich foods and produce food fit for kings. Naphtali is a doe set free that bears beautiful fawns. Joseph is the foal of a wild donkey, the foal of a wild donkey at a spring, one of the wild donkeys on the ridge. Archers attacked him savagely. They shot at him and harassed him, but his bow remained taunt, and his arms were strengthened by the hands of the mighty one of Jacob, by the shepherd, the rock of Israel. May the God of your father help you. May the Almighty bless you with the blessings of the heavens above, and blessings of the watery depths below, and blessings of the breasts and womb. May my fatherly blessings on you surpass the blessings of my ancestors, reaching to the heights of the eternal hills, the eternal hills. May these blessings rest on the head of Joseph, who is a prince among his brothers. Benjamin is a ravenous wolf, devouring his enemies in the morning and dividing his plunder in the evening. These are the twelve tribes of Israel, and this is what their father said as he told his sons goodbye. He blessed each one with an appropriate message. Then Jacob instructed them, Soon I will die and join my ancestors. Bury me with my father and grandfather in the cave in the field of Aphron and Hittite. This is the cave in the field of Machpelah near Mamre in Canaan. 
that Abraham bought from Ephron the Hittite as a permanent burial site. There Abraham and his wife Sarah are, are buried. There Isaac and his wife Rebecca are buried. And there I buried Leah. It is the plot of land and the cave that my grandfather Abraham bought from the Hittites. When Jacob had finished this charge to his sons, he drew his feet into the bed, breathed his last, and joined his ancestors in death. Chapter 50 Joseph threw himself on his father and wept over him and kissed him. Then Joseph told the physicians who served him to embalm his father's body, so Jacob was embalmed. The embalming process took the usual 40 days, and the Egyptians mourned his death for 70 days. When the period of mourning was over, Joseph approached Pharaoh's advisors and said, Please do me this favor and speak to Pharaoh on my behalf. Tell him that my father made me swear an oath. He said to me, Listen, I am about to die. Take my body back to the land of Canaan and bury me in the tomb I prepared for myself. So please allow me to go and bury my father. After his burial, I will return without delay. Pharaoh agreed to Joseph's request. Go and bury your father as he made you promise, he said. So Joseph went up to bury his father. He was accompanied by all of Pharaoh's officials, all the senior members of Pharaoh's household, and all the senior officers of Egypt. Joseph also took his entire household and his brothers and their households, but they left their little children in flocks and herds in the land of Goshen. A great number of chariots and charioteers accompanied Joseph. When they arrived at the thre threshing floor of Hattad, near the Jordan River, they held a very great and solemn memorial service with a 70-day period of mourning for Joseph's father. The local residents, the Canaanites, watched them mourning at the threshing floor of Atad. Then they renamed that place, which is near the Jordan, Abel Mizram, for they said, This is a place of deep mourning for these Egyptians. So Jacob's sons did as he had commanded them. They carried his body to the land of Canaan and buried him in the cave in the field of Machpelah near Mamre. This is the cave that Abraham had bought as a permanent burial site from Ephron, the Hittite. After burying Jacob, Joseph returned to Egypt with his brothers and all who, all who had accompanied him to his father's burial. But now that their father was dead, Joseph's brothers became fearful. Now Joseph will show his anger and pay us back for all the wrong we did to him, they said. So they sent this message to Joseph. Before your father died, he instructed us to say to you, Please forgive your brothers for the great wrong they did to you, for their sin is treating you so for their sin in treating you so cruelly. So we the servants of the God of your father beg you to forgive our sin. When, jo when Joseph received the message he broke down and wept. Then his brothers came and threw themselves down before Joseph. Look, we are your slaves they said. But Joseph replied, Don't be afraid of me. Am I God that I can punish you? You intended to harm me, but God intended it all for good. He brought me to this position so I could save the lives of many people. No, don't be afraid. I will continue to take care of you and your children. So he reassured them by speaking kindly to them. So Joseph and his brothers and their families continued to live in Egypt. Joseph lived to the age of 110. He lived to see three generations of descendants of his son Ephraim, and he lived to see the birth of the children of Manasseh's son Maker, who, or Makir, who was claimed as his own. Hello. Soon I will die, Joseph told his brothers, but God will surely come to help you and lead you out of this land of Egypt. He will bring you back to the land he solemnly promised to give to Abraham, to Isaac, and to Jacob. Then Joseph made the sons of Israel swear an oath, and he said, When God comes to help you and lead you back, you must take my bones with you. 
So Joseph died at the age of 110. The Egyptians embalmed him, and his body was placed in a coffin in Egypt. Moving on to Matthew chapter 13, verses 31 to 58. It's windy. Here is another illustration Jesus used. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed planted in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of garden plants. It grows into a tree, and birds come and make nests in its branches. Jesus also used this illustration. The kingdom of heaven is like the yeast a woman uses to make bread. Even though she put only a little yeast in three measures of flour, it permeated every part of the dough. Jesus always used stories and illustrations like these when speaking to the crowds. In fact, he never spoke to them without using such parables. This fulfilled what God had spoken through the prophet. I will speak to you in parables. I will explain things hidden since the creation of the world. Then, leaving the crowds outside, Jesus went into the house. His disciples said, Please explain to us the story of the weeds in the field. Jesus replied, The Son of Man is the farmer who plants the good seed. The field is the world, and the good seeds represent and the good seed represents the people of the kingdom. The weeds are the people who belong to the evil one. The enemy who planted the weeds among the wheat is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the harvesters are the angels. Just as the weeds are sorted out and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the world. The Son of Man will send his angels, and they will remove from his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. And the angels will throw them into the fiery furnace, where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Then the righteous will shine like the sun in their father's kingdom. Anyone with ears to hear should listen and understand. The kingdom of heaven is like a treasure that a man discovered hidden in a field. In his excitement, he hid it again and sold everything he owned to get enough money to buy the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant on the lookout for choice pearls. When he discovered a pearl of great value, he sold everything he owned and bought it. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a fishing net that was thrown into the water and caught fish of every kind. When the net is full, they dragged it when the net was full, they dragged it up onto the shore, sat down, and sorted the good fish into crates, but threw away the bad ones. That is the way it will be at the end of the world. The angels will come and separate the wicked people from the righteous, throwing the wicked into the fiery furnace where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Do you understand all these things? Yes, they said, we do. Then he added, Every teacher of religious law who becomes a disciple in the kingdom of heaven is like a homeowner who brings from his storeroom new gems of truth as well as old. When Jesus had finished telling these stories and illustrations, he left that part of the country. He returned to Nazareth, his hometown. When he taught there in the synagogue, everyone was amazed and said, where does he get this wisdom and the power to do miracles? Then they scoffed. He's just the carpenter's son, and we know Mary, his mother, and his brothers, James, Joseph, Simon, and Judas. All his sisters live right here among us. Where did he learn all these things? And they were deeply offended and refused to believe in him. Then Jesus told them, a prophet is honored everywhere except in his own hometown and among his own family. And so he did only a few miracles there because of their unbelief. Thank you for joining me for today's reading through the Bible in 365. I hope you all have a wonderful Wednesday and I will see you in the next one, guys.